Hey everybody, are you guys loving all the lives? I'm calling this whole... Hey everybody, not sure if you heard the first intro, but if you didn't, here's the second one. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm so excited to have you here, and this has been kind of like a plant-based live extravaganza all over the webosphere. And today I'm here with Lauren Burnick, and I'm super excited. Um, and I'm meeting so many cool new plant-based, new to me plant-based people, established, awesome professionals and things like that. But it's been kind of like this little mini conference because we all have our own Facebook group and we're getting to know each other. It's super cool. And in case you have not heard about the plant-based bundle, let me give you a little, a little tiny tour into that. Um, it ends tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and after that, you can't get it. What You can get the individual items, but they're going to cost you. So, for instance, my class that's in there, the homemade dry mixes, bullions, and sauces, is $35 on Thursday. But you can buy it in the bundle with 100 other things for $49. And Lauren's gonna talk about what she has in the bundle. Like, I feel like some people are like, oh no, it's too many things, I can't think about it. But when you go there, so let's say I've paid my money, I'm on the page that has all the 100 things, and I'm like, ah, scroll all the way down, click the button that says download all. Then move everything into a little folder, and you're done. You wanna do those downloads for one time to store on your computer. If you try to open up each individual PDF, you get seven to 10 times. They keep kind of changing it, but the thing is, is it's not that you can only look at Lauren's um, PDF seven times. That means you can download it seven times. So let's say I downloaded everything last night and then my brand new computer came in today. It doesn't mean everything's lost. I can download it again to there. Or I could download it also to my um, iPad so I could have it around. But that's what it is. So no, when you open, the, if you're opening up an individual one, there's some little dots or a, a little arrow and click that and it says download to computer. That's what you wanna do. If you close it, that means to the program you download it once, but you don't have anything to show for it, right? So that's really important. But there's live events too coming up, right? Um, so mm -hmm. there's classes and courses and videos and um, stuff with the plant-based doctors. There's breathing, there's exercise, there's yoga. There's a 21 a day kind of restart program. There's tons and tons of things that I'm excited about. There's nice cream. There's um, an ebook from uh, like a 16 year old plant based prodigy, so many things. So, and if you have some questions about that, and wherever you are, somewhere around, there is a link to buy the bundle. If you buy through that link, um, I make sure to email me your receipt because that's my link, and I have a surprise. You'll get to join me also in a live class next month. But enough about that. Let's talk to Lauren. And Lauren, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Okay, hello. I'm Lauren Burnick of WellElephant.com. And I, I am so happy to meet you, Kathy. Um, I've heard so many good things and also looked at your, um, your offering in the bundle. And uh, I was going to make your macaroni and cheese your sauce but I was like I bet everybody's made that who's come on and people are probably so sick of watching that so I didn't but I'm gonna make it for myself um <laughs> good call right <laughs> <laughs> but I'm making it again at noon like the thing is is I so I have a big jar of cheese sauce and now I have another jar of cheese sauce so I'm gonna have to find some local people who are like pick me I want dry cheese sauce <laughs> Right, exactly. So I'm going to make something else from the bundle. I got home from being out of town last night at like 11 something. And I think my college kid came over to do some stuff for us while we were gone and wiped out my fridge. So I was like, what do I have? It was like, now what can I make? It was like, what ingredients do I have? And then let me see what I can make. Um, but anyway, I'm from wellelephant.com. And I teach people how to ace 
plant-based eating. I have a course called ACE Plant-Based Eating. Uh, ACE is an acronym. A stands for amend the recipe. But if you get the bundle, you don't have to amend anything because it's oil-free and it's plant-based. So mm. uh, C stands for cook without oil and E is eat out on the go or eat on the go because that's really all you have to know how to do to um, be able to go plant-based without oil. But my offering in the bundle is a cookbook and it's called Cook Your Way to Health with Well Elephant. And I kind of came to this way of eating because um, in 2015, I was diagnosed with some really serious heart disease. Mm. And the doctor's just like, you know, eat some chicken and fish and uh, fruits and vegetables and avocados and olive oil and blah, blah, and just take a statin, you'll be fine. And I was like, and that's pretty much what I eat right now. So I don't think that could be right. Um, and I don't want to take a statin. So what should I do? And he's like, what? I mean, I think I was the first person who ever said something. You know, I guess everybody else just took the statin and left. So long mm. story short, I found my way to prevent and reverse heart disease. Dr. Esselstyn, I started following that. Um, I've recently had a, a Cleveland heart lab panel that shows that I've actually reversed my disease. I've changed the size and shape of my blood platelets. I've, I don't have any inflammation. I don't have any oxidized LDL. And so I just kind of show everybody what I did so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's awesome. And that's just what people need too. Cause I think when you go into the doctor, it's so scary because they tell you things and like, even if you're a Google researcher, which is always dangerous. My doctor's always like, what did you look up this time, right? But you Dr. can't Google. understand what all the things are. Like, I, and I don't do it to like go, no, I want to do this. But like, if, if I get a blood panel, I look up all those things so I can kind of understand what that abbreviation means and things. So I, I love the way that you're kind of breaking it down and making it easier. Because once you get a diagnosis from the doctor, you're already scared. Right. Yes. And it's I was really, terrified. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to then kind of go, OK, let's try something new. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I, I mean, I think I was terrified. I was so terrified that, I, yeah, I was eager to try something new because I knew I knew that just didn't sound right to me. What and he was I, saying. I love that. And I will say, because um, I don't know what you're making yet, but I do. I think I picked the appropriate cup. It says do your best when you're like. I don't know what I have in my fridge. I'm like, that's awesome. I love that kind of cooking. But I do want to mention, yeah. and that's why I'm looking over here. I have another computer um, showing the book. And there's like creamy cilantro serrano sauce, <clears throat> like a faux honey dressing, um, lots of sauces and dressing, soups, butternut squash, my favorite. Um, and like lasagna, lentil sl sloppy joes, cauliflower steak, spaghetti squash. And I like this home-based meal, rice, beans, and greens, because that is what a lot yes. of us end up doing, especially if you meal prep. I've had some great meal preppers on this past Vicky. week. I am not a good meal prepper. Part of it is if I prep things, my wife is like, yeah, I don't feel like that. So I have to either like do it covertly where she doesn't realize it's prepped ahead of time. Yeah. But these exactly. sound amazing. And I mean, you even have sweets like chocolate milk, obviously, and birthday cakes and things like that. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have a wide variety of things in there, um, like the lasagna you mentioned and the creamy cilantro serrano. Those have cashews. So that's something I eat very sparingly, or maybe I make it for company. If you're trying to reverse heart disease, if you don't have heart disease, that's fine. Or if you're trying to lose weight, I know this is um, called a weight loss bundle. But, you know, my focus is on health. If you if you do these things, you're going to I lost 20 pounds and that's was a side effect of getting healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I don't like to focus on that, but you will probably lose weight if you eat that. But, you know, the cashews and things I want people to do sparingly. But like your cup says, do your best. And sometimes you need an entry level, something that I try to put in like familiar foods and that's why I have a lot of those things in there, because if you're just sliding into this, it's overwhelming or it can be. And, you know, you want things that you've eaten in real life, like your real life, and you just want it to continue. But 
look a little different now. So I, I completely agree with that because I, I do a lot of transitional foods. And the thing is, too, is usually you're not eating and cooking in a vacuum either. So right. um, my wife went vegan four years ago, but she ate vegan at home. Right. But I still I would be like, what is it you're craving? I can make that. So just right. tell me what it is, the crunch, the flavors, the whatevers. And um, Lauren, I know I haven't tried these on your recipes yet, but one of the things that I do and I add in mind for people who are allergic to nuts or avoiding nuts is oftentimes in sauces like my dry mixes, you can use ground rolled oats. And because yeah. it will also thicken up as you cook it, kind of like cashews do. And yes. it's a good nut-free option. <clears throat> and what I'll try and do, I, I get on a plane tomorrow morning, and I have two more interviews today. But if I can do it, I'll try and make one of those sauces and see if it works. Oh, that's awesome. With your permission. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Please. Oh, that's good. So your wife is vegan? Like, is she plant-based? or She's or mostly plant-based. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... At home, she's plant-based for sure. And she started doing it to be plant-based. So actually, she, I think it was 2019, like mid or early 2019. And like a lot of people, you know, the, I always say we're third year of the pandemic. And last year yeah. was a particularly hard year for me. Um, and so I was dealing with like some anxiety and some depression. And so it was a little hard to get things done, which is why I wanted sure. to make some dry mixes because... Okay, I'm on the upswing on 2022, but not everybody is, right? Yes. And it's nice to have something you can just put in a pan with some water and non-dairy milk and put over your steamed vegetables, your potatoes, so that yeah. you can prep this food and you don't, you're not like, uh, broccoli and plain potato again, day 69, right? Because Yeah, exactly. That's not sustainable for most people. Now, no. If you put a different kind of seasoning on it or a different sauce, absolutely. Because then it doesn't feel like the same thing, which is why I really like in, in your ebook how you have such a great little touch on everything. It's just really nice. Yeah. Thank you. I, I agree. Like, I think the, um, so the whole, oh, Kathy had mentioned before, my home base, my main meal, it's just like a legume, a whole grain. Uh, it could be some tofu or tempeh. Uh, maybe a sweet potato or a potato, all kinds of vegetables, definitely lots of le leafy green vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's just a bowl. And I change it up with sauces all the time. And in the bundle, I mean, it's worth it to get the bundle just for all the dressings and the sauces. Like Stacy uh, Heine, she has like a book, all what the secrets in the sauce. And mm -hmm. um, Lissa has a, like all dressings. I mean, there's so many thing, books that are just salad dressings or sauces so you're always eating something different that's that's kind of the idea of it and, and then I, the bowl love, is like the same sorry about that different. no go ahead <laughs> it's always hard when I'm looking Jump at the in. camera because when I'm looking down here I'm looking at her so I feel like I'm not looking at yes. you guys at that point so um I was just going to say two two of the salad prep uh, Tiffany does mason jar meals and her salads are awesome and she puts them in really big jars and she makes them for the whole week. And um, Tammy Kramer actually has them in flatter containers that she adds other things to. So she makes her base 14 salads every week for her right. and her husband. And I just love it. And so like one of her tips too was to, she doesn't use lettuce. So she has cabbage, carrots, broccoli slaw, and green. So a green that's Romaine might hold up for a little while, but like things like even like spinach, kale, collard, Swiss chard, any of those greens are going to hold up for seven full days plus. So smart. That's I know. So many good ideas. I listened to, um, there was a hypnotist, Jane, Jane Goddard, Janie Goddard, I think. Um, I listened to her last night, like it was a, a weight loss hypnotism, but I fell asleep. It was her voice was so soothing. I got to listen. She said to listen to it often, but uh, I was just like, I just want to check this out. This is so cool. And it was so soothing. That's awesome. I did have a question from Cindy Reed because um, one of my recipes uses lactic acid and wanted uh -huh. to know what this is. So la this lactic acid is from Druid's Grove. It's made with non-GMO beets is what it is. So that's the ingredient. 
and it's got, so it's lactic acid and calcium lactate. It is a vegan product. It's gluten-free, it's soy-free, all of those things. And it's just a little powder. So I use it in my cheese sauce. You had been mentioning the cheese sauce earlier. And you don't have to have this. I've got alternatives for this too. But see how it looks just like a little white powder? And you're going to use less than this. So this container that costs about $15 I've had for a couple of years. And what it oh, wow. does is it on your tongue, it gives you that tang that, that cheese does. It doesn't taste like cheese, but it gives a tang. So you could use citric acid. You could use like lemon powder is another substitute. Or when you make the sauce, you could add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, coconut vinegar, any of the vinegars that you want. So it mm -hmm. just gives that extra sour. Um, and I found it's kind of been this, it's vegan cheese recipe that's been passed down from blogger to blogger and everybody's put their little signature on it is how I found out about lactic acid. And in two of my books, I've got a sliceable oil-free vegan cheese one made with chickpeas and one made with oats. Oh, and, and somebody's oh, wow. asking, where does she purchase it? You can get it on Amazon. And I will try and come back after this and I'll try and put a link in there for you to make it easy. Um, I know food prices are changing, so I don't guarantee that it's $15 right now, but hopefully it is. So sorry to interrupt you, Lauren. Um, no. Have you used lactic acid before by any chance? No, I just wrote it down so I could <laughs> order it. Well, it's really interesting <laughs> too. But because so in putting it in some of your favorite cheese sauce or cheesy sauces, um, it just gives it a little mm. I'm I'm so excited. Like this is the thing. I you mentioned like just meeting so many nice people. I've met so many nice people, but I've also picked up so many tips and I'm seven years into this and I thought I had like a really good handle on it, but I mean, I'm just still getting all these amazing tips. So this has been fantastic on every level to me. And, and that's what I'm trying to tell all the viewers out there too, is that it's so cool for us because we are learning mm -hmm. all from each other too. And I think yeah. it's one of those things you just never stop learning. I went meatless in 1983. Wow. <laughs> so, but I mean, I've probably been vegan about 11 or 12 years now. But, um, wow. but then being vegetarian was almost impossible. Kind of like being vegan was maybe 15, 20 years ago. It was a lot hard. It wasn't mm -hmm. impossible. But you couldn't just go to a restaurant and go, I want something vegetarian. They would be like, mm -hmm. yeah, I was vegetarian probably in the late eighties and early nineties. And it was, it was, it was okay. It was vegetarians, a different level that, cause you could get a pizza or you could get a whatever egg. It's not the hardest thing, but going, I can't even imagine going vegan then like that just would have been probably next to impossible. It would mean cooking but, at home more, probably. Um, well, and it's, for sure. And so us old, or at least me, the old timer, I won't oh, include old. you in my old timer. <laughs> no, you can. I, <laughs> absolutely. I turn um, 57 in two months, so I'm excited. Well, I'm right behind you. I'm 53. <laughs> so, yeah, good for us. We're doing it. We're doing it. Middle age We're for growing the old Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah. I've always been excited about getting older. So like I wasn't a, one of my friends who got like freaked out by 30. I was like, oh yeah, 30. And then I was super excited to turn 40 and my forties were really a huge period of growth. And it's when I started doing a lot of this stuff. And so it's just been very exciting. Um, yeah, I agree. Ronnie's asking if you use citric acid instead, do you use the same amount as lactic acid? Which book has the cheese? There, um, vegan cooking in your air fryer has, um, I don't know which one. I think that is the chickpea cheese. And I believe it's gluten-free vegan cooking in your instant pot that has the oat. And I will check after because like I said, I'm a middle-aged lady. I wrote 10 books. I don't always remember these things as well as I'd like to. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know it's a lot to keep up with. And I have, um, a queso recipe. I live in Texas, so you have to eat queso every day. It's the law. And so I have a queso recipe in my, uh, in the cook your way to health with well elephant in the bundle. So, but I'm going to put some lactic acid in it and see what happens. 
Oh, I wish you lived nearby and I would just like give you a little baggie of it. I know. Oh. I'm going to be in El Paso okay. in a couple of weeks, but I don't know how close El Paso is. That is not close. That's like a 10 hour drive, Kathy. <laughs> That's what I think. Texas is, Texas is nothing as close by. <laughs> That's awesome. I so, are you. Oh, lost my AirPods. Oh, happens to the best AirPod. of us. That's for sure. Oh, I love this. Anthea says 60 is the new 40. Yeah, I think 60s are going to be kind of awesome because here's what happens. Okay, new people who are young and are like, old people suck. It's okay. You're going to feel that way. You're also going to not believe any of the things that we tell you. That is also okay. Just know that. Yeah. But I, I kind of feel like every decade, you're so much smarter. You, you make new mistakes. But like I always say, if I met my 20-year-old self, I would be like, yeah, I can't hang out with you for like a decade. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you feel that at all? Oh, yeah. And sometimes, like, I'm surprised at my kids how wise they are in their 20s because I'm like, man, I was just a fool. I, I don't even know. But, um, yeah, I love getting older. Everything except for this. I don't love that my eyeballs don't want to work anymore. But other than that, I love everything. Um, I, I just feel... I just feel more myself. I just feel like I know who I am and, you know, just smarter about things and smart, just smarter about what I want and what I don't want and able to express that and able to say, I'm not comfortable with that or I don't want to do that or, you know, I want to do this. So anyway. I love that. Yeah, it's all no, good. And, I, and, and I love the way all the conversations of all the things we're doing for the plant base are turning to whatever it is, because like, now I'm like, the only thing, I wish you lived next door, A, so I could give you some lactic acid, B, so I could bring my tea over and we could chat for a couple of hours and hang out. That's and right. you could make me a cheese sauce to taste. That's right. And you could make me a cheese sauce. So, yeah. Cheese so, sauce it would be good. Maybe we'll meet someday. <laughs> yes, that would be really fun. Well, do you want me to make the, um, I, it's a really short recipe because I had to yeah. prep a lot of it. You want me to make that? Absolutely. So this is, I. I'm going to change it to full screen. Lady. So okay. There you go. Okay. I butcher this poor lady's name every single time. It's something to the effect of Michelle Swatsana. Do you know who she is, Kathy? She did the, um, I think she, her book is called Whole Eating Whole in the uh, plant-based bundle. It's so good. And I made this last week. And so I still had all the ingredients. So that's why I'm making it again. But also I'm making it again because, uh, I ate the whole thing in one day. Like it was three separate. I ate it like right after my morning live. Then I ate it for lunch and then I ate it for dinner. So I don't think you're supposed to eat a whole package of tofu in one day, but I accidentally did last week and I probably will today. <laughs> so I, I, I did the prep work ahead of time because you had to um, first marinate the tofu. So you know, you use firm or extra firm tofu. You cut it free from the package. You, I just roll it up like into a, a clean dish towel and squeeze the water out gently so you don't squish the tofu, but you want all the liquid to come out. Um, and then just chopped it up into bite-sized pieces. And the marinade had four tablespoons of soy sauce. I just used the old Bragg liquid amino. Um, and then two tablespoons of rice vinegar and two tablespoons of cornstarch. So that was a marinade. You just like whip it up and uh, let it soak for like 30 minutes and then transfer it to your air fryer for like at 400 for about 15 minutes till it gets crispy. Or you could do it in your oven, I think at like 400 uh, for 10 to 15 minutes. So, you know, just till it gets kind of crispy. So now we're at the point where, let me grab it. I have my crispy tofu from the air fryer. It's all done. Mm, it and so now good. we're just going to make... It yeah, already looks good. I just eat it like that. But now we're just going to make like a little plum sauce. I'm going to tilt this down a little so you can see. Oh, this is annoying. Okay, let me stand back. So um, I'm just going to make this in here quickly. So two cloves of garlic, which I already minced. I'm going to put that in there. Um one inch of ginger root. So I have this little thing. It looks like, you know, when you're getting a pedicure and they saw off the 
disgusting part of your dead skin foot. That so, is the um, best description of that I have ever heard in my life, and I'm stealing it. I just have to tell you. <laughs> okay, give me credit. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> this is, you don't have to. This is, I guess it's, I have like a microplane that, or like a zester, but I like this little thing for ginger. So an inch of ginger. Um, then it, the next thing is, while I'm grating the ginger, I'm just going to tell you, it calls for like a half a cup of maple syrup, but that seemed like a lot to me. So I did, I had some date paste at home this time. Last time I just did a third cup of maple syrup and it still turned out really good. That was all you needed. Um, this time I filled up a half cup, but I put in probably almost a quarter cup of date paste and then a quarter cup of maple syrup. So we'll see how this turns out, but I have a feeling it'll be totally fine. And if not, I'm it's, it'll be fine. I can't imagine it won't oh, be. Okay, so that. I'm going to interrupt you for just a second. I'm so good. I agree with what you're saying a thousand percent. And I just want to point out that this is one of the things that I'm very passionate about is that with my recipes, even, I want you to tailor them to suit your tastes and your needs. And I think the more you open your mind to that kind of thinking, because yeah, I might like maple syrup more than you do, right? And it's perfectly yep. fine. And if you think, if you know you typically like things less sweet, you can always start with half of that, put it in the marinade, right? Yep. Taste it. Because we're cooking vegan food. We can taste it as we go along. And you can be like, well, I was wrong. And add a little more. <sighs> and I think, um, because I work, uh, or I develop recipes that are meant to be inclusive for everyone. So I work a lot with the Sophus people, Chef AJ's people, right? who only use dates as sweeteners and maple right. syrup doesn't work in their dietary constrictions. Uh, and that's okay too. And date paste ends up giving kind of a really neat kind of slightly caramelized flavor to things. So mm -hmm. I just wanted, I had to pop in and say, yay you, that was all. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. It looks like oh, it's about to spill. So can't here, I'll tilt it over here. So you can see it's a mm -hmm. little bit, it's a little bit, you know, thicker consistency than just maple syrup, but that's a half cup. So like I said, half and half dates, date paste and um, maple syrup. So we'll see. I, I bet it's going to be good. Uh, chili flakes optional. Definitely. Yes. For me, it says half a teaspoon. Mm, I'm going to probably go closer to a teaspoon. Uh, four tablespoons of tomato paste. I already measured that out. And I here I have a tip, but I bet what do you do with leftover tomato paste? I know what you're gonna say. Um, I I measure it out in tablespoons, and I put it on parchment paper, and I freeze it. Is that yep. what you do? Absolutely. We are on the same page, sister. See, um, this I'm meeting so many people. Last time I made it, I, I'm meeting so many people that I feel like we should definitely be hanging out all the time. Yeah, I know. If you know that trick, then we need to be friends for exactly. sure. Exactly. Um, <laughs> six tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari. Again, I'm just going back to my Bragg liquid amino. You could use a secret, coconut secret too. Wait, I have to count. One, what did I say? Six, two, three, six. Okay. That and two tablespoons of rice vinegar. This is, it cooks up so fast. That's great. And for people who are on a SOS diet, don't forget you can get rice vinegar that's unseasoned. So it doesn't have any salt or sugar in it. And you can also get low as well. Wow. That's good. I didn't even know that. Okay. And uh, four teaspoons of arrowroot powder, which is this. It's just a thickener. Make sure you do teaspoons, not tablespoons. Um, <laughs> and a few drops of hot sauce, which I, yes, I have done that before. And then you get cement. So you don't want to do that. So then I'm just going to whisk it all up. I mean, that was so super easy. Whisk. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. I'm going to move you guys over here. Let me see. Ooh, what a pretty Camera kitchen. Changes. Thank you. Let me check her recipe. I think you put the... 
Okay, then you just add the sauce to the tofu. You know what? I'm not going to add all the sauce because last time I put all the sauce and it was, I think I didn't need all of it. And I could have used um, some just over like vegetables later. Yeah. So I'm going to do like half the sauce this time and I'm going to save half of that. And maybe I'll end up just doing another batch of tofu later in the week. Okay, so let me let this warm up a tiny bit. Maybe I'll put a little more sauce. So I used, I used most of it, but I think I'm gonna use some later. Okay, I'm just letting the sauce heat up. I have this really nice um, nonstick pan that I like, scan pan. Um, do you have I, that? I, I've heard of it. I still have not tried one. Cause I, cause I, I didn't have one for forever. I didn't have a nonstick pan. I just cooked in a, you know, ceramic pan or mm -hmm. whatever, but I like this one. I just tried it. It's pretty good so far. Okay. And then I'm just going to put the tofu in and then you just stir it up for a couple minutes and that's it. And then you just put it in. I had already, um, steamed some greens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just a tiny bit of greens. Uh, I mean, just greens and a tiny bit of water and just steamed it up. I like them pretty bright and crispy, so I didn't do them for too long. And then I have my brown rice already here. And I don't know if you could see it. It's a tiny bit yellow because I, I just grate up a little bit of um, turmeric when I am making my rice. I have a rice cooker. I'm always just trying to sneak in a little bit more something healthy. I love that. I love that. And so do you, yeah. how do you keep, do you keep your fresh turmeric then? Do you keep it in the freezer or how do you? Ooh, that's a good idea. No, I actually just keep it in the fridge. And then I just threw out the last wilty little piece. Cause like I said, I got home last night and it was just like a sad little <laughs> shriveled thing in the refrigerator. I was like, you need to go turmeric. I'll have to get some more, but um, yeah, that's plenty of sauce. Oh, that looks so good. I know it smells so good. I mean, and that was so easy, right? I mean, there was a little bit of prep that you didn't see, but it didn't take long at all. And it makes such a nice meal. Oh, it's nice and thick the way it coats everything. Like you really feel like you went out to like an Asian restaurant and you got something fried and decadent. It's good. Oh man. And I it's think it's like ready whenever you say it's ready. Yep, because mm, everything's yeah. cooked basically. I mean, it's just your right. your sauce warms oh up God. and that cooks up all the things in the sauce. Um, yeah. One, one thing that I do sometimes if I'm doing a stir fry, is I might throw some broccoli slaw and saute that up, and then put the sauce in and the tofu. Obviously, that I'm going yeah. off book because I'm a crazy person like that. Me too. Same, same. And you're doing exactly what I just said. You're always trying to sneak in something a little healthy extra right is it's, that why you do that or it, it is and um I make something okay it's not my idea it's Trader Joe's idea I'm gonna see if I can put us in the two and if it puts you in a bad place or not no okay actually it doesn't at all okay yeah I'm totally I'm yeah, speaking not to of Trader you off. Joe's wait I just want to speak when you said Trader Joe's that reminded me have you ever used their uh, shredded kale it's this is awesome. the best stuff ever okay go ahead what were and you going to say? Exactly. Well, see, and here's the thing. So, okay, first, no shame in anybody's game for going to Trader Joe's and getting broccoli slaw, shredded kale, any of that. Do what you need to do. And, yes, if, if you can do it all from scratch, That's you can get it from a local organic farm, I'm happy for you, too. Yes. But some people can't cut up all the things, too. You could have a wrist issue. So everybody, yeah. there's a range. It costs more to get some things at Trader Joe's. But for instance, today when I'm leaving for Chicago for a few days, I'm probably buying some of that stuff for Cheryl, yeah. right? Because she's not, I can bring, I could buy, fill up the fridge. She's not cutting one thing. It's you not do ever, all the cooking, I assume. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Same in my house, same here. And so Cruciferous Crunch is a really nice thing you can buy at Trader Joe's, but they're, they're really quite large slices and Cheryl, Cheryl, you, people used to ask how old my daughter was because she's a picky eater. So I would write about it. How old's your daughter? 50 oh my gosh. years ago, right? <laughs> and so I go in and I chop it all up. And I was like, I, I pull out my food processor, which I hate. I put on my shredding blade. I save up my broccoli stems, peel them, shred them, 
shred green, red cabbage, carrots. Sometimes I'll shred Brussels sprouts if they're in season. And then it makes like 10 or 12 cups and it lasts all week. But I'll put four cups as a base of a stir, stir fry, about three or four cups with some tofu for a scramble. So all I do is saute yeah. that stuff first, add things and add sauces and flavors. Um, but it's a great way to get in a lot of those veggies and you just do it once. And if, they're, if you're like, I'm done with this about day four, you can freeze it and use it in soups and stews later. Oh, I didn't know that. I use, I buy that stuff all the time. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm always just chunking it in there. So, but look how good that looks. I want it. I know. And you know what? After, so I'm going to mix it all up because there's going to be plenty of sauce for everything. But if there wasn't, then I could just heat up a little of that sauce and give the drizzle over the other stuff. But I think there's going to be plenty. But that's it. How fast? That was so easy. I know. You did great. You did and you didn't. You said you didn't have as much as you usually have in your fridge. Yes. And I, I think that's one time, good. one thing that people think is that plant-based eating is too hard like it like as far as like oh i have to cook and cut and do all the things all the time and if you have more time than money you can cut all those things up once or twice a week right if you have a little more money but you don't have any time at all you can buy them already cut up and yep. use them that way and you know that rice was in my freezer that's how it survived the college student coming over here but um that you know my kid was over here and like i said they clean me out but um <laughs> that rice i froze before i left and i was like oh i have rice too and so i can still make that up so that was already here but yeah i didn't have a lot of stuff but i had something no and that's amazing and we talked yesterday with a couple of different people who froze their rice in half cup servings because they're trying to make sure they eat exactly the the right amount and oh that's a good idea you can yeah so on sunday or once a month, you could have once a month that you cook four different kinds of grains. I love millet. I know millet, everybody goes, it's yes. bird seed, but it's so, I like it. It's such a good texture, but you can, mm -hmm. and you can make your quinoa and do all that and put it in little reusable Ziploc bags. They've got lots of silicone ones now, if you want, and just put them in the freezer, take them out. And there you go. And yeah, that's exactly. Cheap, right. Yep. And you've got them done. And I usually, anything that I have as a leftover, we're a two-person household. It sounds like you have a college student that comes in, so you may have to cook batches well, more. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're a two-person household right now, but we're in Austin, and my kid goes to the University of Texas, doesn't live here, but comes home enough to shop in my pantry and eat my food, which, of course, I want. Yeah. I want them to. Absolutely. But like, <laughs> if you're if you're just a couple of people or like I do this for our lunches, is that if there's one portion of stew or chili or dal or something I've made, put some rice in a little glass container, put that on, throw it in the freezer, because I can heat that yeah. up when I go, I, I tend to work until I'm cranky. And then I realize I need to eat. So now that Cheryl's been working <laughs> from home, too, I notice a little sooner. But like yeah. I can, I can go to like two or You've three o'clock if I'm by myself and I don't have to talk to anyone. But <laughs> when I was in the office, I had to eat before I went to the office so I could be yeah. a human being. But just That's realize so like funny. a lot of those little things are like doing yourself a favor for your future mm -hmm. self. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. I like that. So, yeah. And Lauren, do you have any other tips or secret ninja oh ways of doing things that you'd like to share with everybody before we wrap up? Oh, that's good. Good question. Do I have any secret ninja ways? Um, what do I do? I think just like, this is my, um, tip for going out to eat. I'll give you that ninja tip. Um, so when I don't know where we're going, I can't call the restaurant. I am not sure what's going to happen. I do two things. I always bring like a salad dressing in a leak proof container. Ugh, I can't locate one now, but anyway, mm -hmm. you know what a container looks like. It's leak proof. You order them, you know, online or you get them at the store 
and uh, I take my salad dressing in a leak-proof container. And I make sure it's a good salad. Yes, exactly. And I make sure it's a good salad dressing. You know, um, I like whatever, something creamy. And so that I'm not just eating lettuce with lemon, if that's the thing, because that will make me cranky and I will be unhappy. Um, so that's one thing. And then I mentioned we live in Texas. We eat Mexican food quite often. So I always bring my uh, chips in the car and my chips are, you know, with me in my bag. My chips are simply um, organic baked corn tortillas. I bake them in the oven. At, I just throw them on the rack at 400 degrees for like 10 minutes. And then they're crispy and I just put them in a little bag and I bring them with me. And that way, you know, I can usually get some vegan beans and then I ha dip that in the salsa or I can make a little taco salad when I get there. And then I feel happy. And those are my two my tips for going out. Amazing tips. Amazing, amazing tips. So I was even thinking in Chicago too, because I think I'm going to be able to get some delivery to the hotel room and I could get a dressing or some yeah. balsamic or something sent to me. There's some restaurants I think that I'm gonna be able to get a few things at that are gonna work. But oh, that's we, good. Yeah, I, I love that and I love, you know, okay. your chip idea. Yeah. Because- I always do that. I love vegan oil-free nachos. Like if I'm having a bad day, sometimes you just need it. And I, I know you yeah. love queso. I love queso too. I have like one made with potatoes, one made with cauliflower, and I have one you make in the, uh, in the blender with oats. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh you my need gosh. It. I can't wait to. Yeah, you need queso. Awesome. <laughs> and where can yeah. people find you? Or, and what are your main platforms that you would like people to follow you at besides wellelephant.com? Um, so yeah, if you go to wellelephant.com, you can download a free three day meal plan and grocery list. Um, I know Kathy, if you want to order the bundle from, from Kathy, she has her link. Mine, I think I have it on Instagram in my bio. If you're, if you follow me and you came here to watch me, um, I have it on Facebook, but yeah, Facebook and Instagram would probably be the, the main places. I have a YouTube channel. I haven't been great about keeping it up, but I think after this, I'm going to do better. So I also have YouTube. Um, so you can find me at Well Elephant or Lauren Burnick at Well Elephant. You'll find it. <laughs> awesome. Well, it has been such yes. a pleasure to hang out with you and get to Same, meet you. Same, Kathy. And um, I don't know if in the comments a little bit, people are like, are you going to be doing more shows? And I am going to, I think I'm turning this into a weekly interview show. So I yeah. would I love to invite you back. And so I'll be in contact about that because this was just, yes, so I would fun. love to. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. I've been loving it too. Nice meeting you and nice meeting all your viewers. Thank you. Awesome. You guys. And remember today, if you've got just a little bit of energy, like I have a teaspoon, do something kind for yourself, like freeze yourself some rice and stew for another day, empty your dishwasher. And if you have just a little bit left, do something kind for somebody else. We all need a little bit of that energy out in the world. I will be on Instagram in about an hour and 15 minutes, and I'm going to have another show here at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll see you guys then.